Hello again and welcome back. In this video we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last video. And instead of plotting simply nodes, we're going to start doing some more advanced things. In a network map, one of the things you have to have are edges, which are the lines that connect two different nodes together. And in this video we're going to show how network X and matplotlib work uh, together in perfect harmony to create network maps with edges. The data is going to be processed by network X and represented visually by matplotlib in the same way it was done in the last video. So let's just jump right in. Uh, but before we do that, some of the things I should say are on top of uh, creating edges in this, uh, in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to uh, create edges between multiple nodes at the same time uh, from lists. And I'm also going to show you how to clear data. And these are some of the key functions that we're going to be working with in this video. So once again, we're going to use the Pythonic way of creating a network map. We're going to say nx uh, g is equal to nx.graph, which is going to create our graph. And once again, we are going to add nodes to our graph. Add node, and we're going to do stick with the classics. Why not? g.add node Tom and Jerry. So now we have these two individual nodes. And if you remember from our last video, if we draw it and we plot it, we are going to see both of these nodes represented visually. Two separate nodes. Here we are. There's Tom and Jerry. Once again, we don't have the labels yet. I'm going to talk about that in the next video. So how do we get these two connected? Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. The first way we can do it is we can use the add edge function from network X. And what we are going to tell this function, we need to pass two at, or, uh, we need to pass two arguments, which are going to be Tom and Jerry. And the reason why you have to pass two is because an edge by default needs to function between two different nodes. Now that node might not have a name, it might be unknown, but it needs to be a node in some capacity. When we do this, we run our script, we now see that we have an edge drawing between these two individuals. But this is not the only way to create an edge in Python. One of the other ways in which we can do this is we can use another function called add edges from. And what the reason why this uh, function is very powerful and very useful for DH projects is because what it does is it creates a, li a list of edges from a, uh, a list of tuples. And if you remember my Python series on uh, for Python for the Digital Humanities, a tuple is formatted like this, t1 equals this, and it's going to be parentheses, and it's going to have some piece of data within it. Uh, it can be as many uh, pieces of data that you want. For our purposes, however, we want to create the data between two specific points, two specific individuals. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a list of tuples that are going to be people. So what we want to do is we want to see an edge drawn between Tom and Jerry. We're just going to stick with these two for right now. And I'm going to delete this. And what we're going to see oh, helps if I spell it correctly. There we go. And we're going to run this. And we are going to once again see these two things created. I'm going to explain in just a second why this is so powerful. But before I do, I want to show you one other thing. We do not actually have to create nodes individually when we use the edge function. Network X will automatically draw uh, nodes for uh, when we create an edge for nodes that don't exist. So right now in our data, we only have Tom and J uh, Jerry. What if we wanted to add Fred and Wilma? Let's plot this and see what happens. Boom. We actually have Tom and Jerry out here and Fred and Wilma up here. What Network X has done is it's taken those two nodes, checked to see if they existed, and if they didn't exist, then it drew a connection between them and created the nodes by default. This is going to be a great way uh, to add nodes, especially when we start uh, using external data from XML files, Excel files, or JSON files that we need to iterate across. Uh, so we're going to add edges in this manner. But the other way in which we can add edges is once again like this with our list of tuples. Let's say we had a data set that was just a series of individuals side by side. So let's go ahead and just make a quick list. And again, remember when you're working 
in Python, you never want to name a list list because it's going to override the list function and you don't want to do that. So list names, we are going to, now let's just change it to names, Make it easier. Names equals, and we're going to create a list of tuples. So the first one we want to have is Bob. We want to have Bob's connected to, let's just say Tom, stick with him. And then we're going to separate that tuple with a comma. We're going to create another tuple. And we want Wilma to be friends with, oh, I don't know. Let's say Betty. Starting to see a pattern here. All right. And we're going to create another um, individual. Uh, let's come up with a random name. Walter. And Walter is going to be friends with Jake. Wonderful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to delete that. And we're going to simply pass this list through uh, Python. And what it's going to do is it's going to create edges for us from all of these tuples. So it'll make Bob and Tom connected. It'll make Wilma and Betty connected. And it'll make Walter and Jake connected. And just to make things interesting so we can start to see things a little bit uh, more complex in network maps, let's make Jake friends with also Bob. So it's going to connect Jake to Bob. And let's plot this. What we see here is that network map being plotted. What we see are Tom. Oh, actually, I forgot I added Jerry in the, here somewhere, Tom. So what we're seeing here is Jerry by himself. He doesn't have any friends. I feel kind of bad for Jerry. But what we see is something positive. We see Bob connected to Jake and Tom. And we see who's by themselves. Who is this little group here? I think this is Wilma and Betty. Again, we don't have labels. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add labels so we can actually see what's happening in the graph with actual names. But for right now, hopefully this gives you a sense of how to add edges both individually from manually inserting edges from existing nodes and also how to create edges from nodes that don't actually exist yet and also how to create edges from a list in a single line. But that's not all I want to cover here. What if for some reason we, we don't want Wilma and Betty to be friends anymore? We want them to be separate just like Jerry so that everyone is by themselves. We can use a very important function called remove edge. And we want to separate Wilma and Betty. And so now what happens when we do this is we once again see, oh, lost it. We see these four, uh, four individuals connected as they were before, but now we see Wilma and Betty and Jerry all by themselves. Why? Well, because the remove edge function removes uh, all the edges. What if we want to just get rid of all the data that we actually have? We want to get rid of all of it. Well, all we have to do is hit g.clear and use the clear function. And now when we go to map it, all the data has been cleared and there's nothing to actually plot. In Python, order, just like all other languages, order is very important here. What if I wanted to remove this edge and I stuck it foolishly behind this draw function? Take a moment and pause the video and think about what might happen. If it's drawing the data here and not plotting it until here, what will happen? Well, let's find out. What's happened is, is even though we've rem removed that edge, it has not been rendered in the, uh, the plot. And the reason why is because the data was drawn already in memory. And then we removed the edge, but that didn't affect the actual show function at all because the show function is simply going back to, to the draw function there. So whenever you want to alter the data, it's important that all the alterations occur before that draw function. So that's very important to, uh, to be familiar with. Also, what happens if you're not precise? Well, so let's try to remove something that doesn't exist. And we're going to get an error when we do this. So we want to remove the edge between Bob and let's just say Wilma. Look down here, we get an exception. And the reason why we get the exception is because there is no existing edge between Bob and Wilma. It does not exist. So it's important that you are precise. If you do not have an edge that exists, Python will return an error. So one other thing that we can do, and this is going to be very useful. We're going to do this in more complex ways in later videos, but we can actually use the number of edges function. And what we're going to do is we're going to print off 
the number of edges by calling in x, our network x module, number of edges, and we want to know the number of edges for g. And this is going to print off the number of edges in our output. And we see down here the number of edges are four. So where are these four edges? They're right here, and right here, right here, and right here. And just to demonstrate how this kind of changes, let's add in one more edge. We're going to add an edge between Tom, and we're going to add an edge between him and Jerry. So Jerry's no longer by himself. Tom and Jerry are once again friends, and the world rejoices. Now what we get is five, because we've added in an edge. So I recommend playing around with some of these functions, add edges. I really recommend creating a list of tuples. It's important that you create a list of tuples with two end of, uh, items in each tuple separated by a comma and each tuple separated by a comma. And take a group of your friends and just start making edges. Who has relationships to whom? And then map them out. See what your network map might look like. In the next video, if you join me, we're going to start adding labels to these uh, to these graphs and adding a couple other really kind of interesting arguments to them so that our network graphs stop looking kind of staid and start looking more dynamic and representative of what a social network actually looks like, which is a network map rendered with people's names. So thank you for listening, and I look forward to talking to you in the next video.